Emmanuel, Matthew 1, 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Jesus Christ, to me, empowers his followers to change the world today. Distance is not a barrier to God's move. Emmanuel TV, God with us. Last week here at the Synagogue Church of All Nations as the morning water was being ministered in the congregation. Uh, it's important for us to listen to this testimony. First of all, to encourage us that to God's power, nothing is impossible. Secondly, to prepare our hearts for our own touch that we're going to receive in the course of today's service. And also to educate us and teach us many valuable lessons about life from the lady who has received her deliverance. So let's watch our screens right now and we want to see what happened last week when the sister in question received her deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's watch our screen right now. En este momento vamos a ver un video de la semana pasada durante la administración del agua de la mañana de cómo una mujer recibió su liberación aquí en la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones. At the Synagogue Church of All Nations, the atmosphere is charged with the power of God as the evangelist ministers the morning water sent by Prophet C.B. Joshua on the people one by one. When the power of God is present, healing is like breathing, deliverance is like breathing. We can see this among the congregation as the evil spirit in them is exposed upon coming in contact with the morning water. Watch as this lady begins to manifest as the evil spirit in her is being tormented. For when the light of God is present, darkness has no hiding place. Let's watch her deliverance. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in the blood of Jesus Christ, Holy Ghost, fire in your hair, fire in your eyes, in your mouth, in your heart. Why did you me here? In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, speak out, who are you? What have you done to your marriage? <laughs> Speak out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What have you done to a marriage? Why do you want to know? I say, what have you done to a marriage? What business of yours is about? Find your mouth. How dare you? Speak out. Who are you? Was she meant to marry in the first place? Why was she I not meant to marry? You, was she meant to marry in the first Why place? Why was she not meant to marry? She was not meant to marry. Why? Because that was her engagement with us. Who are you? That's her destiny. What is the destiny? To be my wife forever. Oh, you yeah, are the husband? Yes. Okay, how many of you are there? Mm, three! Yeah, three. three. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Who is number two? I was jealous. Who is number two? Shaka. Shaka. Yeah. Uh huh. Who is Shaka? My content dance. Uh huh. Who is number three? Mm. You have said number one, number two. Should you say number me three? Too. I want to be in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Okay, okay, okay. Pick out. Mm. Who is number three? I'm a violent spirit. Don't try me. Okay. What have you done to her? I'm the great one. The ancient one. That has been dead forever. I was sent down. What's the business here with me? What do you mean you were chained down? I was sent down. You are sent down. Yes. Mm -hmm. To manipulate. Time is too short. Give her to me. She's my instrument. How are you using her? Mm, he wants to know. Many operations. Like what? Many things. She violated my rules, my first rule in the first place. And that made me so angry. And for that reason, she must serve me for the rest of her life. She's been taken to many places, many churches. She's destroyed many, many, many people, many men of God. So how dare you stand in front of me to ask me questions? You want to die me? What did you put on her teeth? Hmm. It's my instrument. It's your instrument. Of attraction. Attraction. Yes. Mm -hmm. She's my instrument. You have said it already. You say you are, you are an instrument in the house of that man. Why well, she's my instrument? So why step her with her? Why try to drag her away from me? I say you have already said you are using her for attracting men. Yes. Uh -huh. You know that what already. What happened to those men? Finished. They are finished. That's what you are using her to do. And most for me, other men, many more of them will go down. Drill. Look at them. Look at them. Lined up. 
Look at them lined up. <laughs> How did you enter her? I was here right from childhood, but I picked out her when she was in her mother's womb. So how do you think you can take her away from me? She's my instrument. She came into parts and rule this whole world. To take as many as possible. And she's valuable. She started for me, I gave her my powers. So how dare you take her away from me? It is time for you to leave that instrument right no. now. No. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Out of her. Out in the name of Jesus Christ. Out of her. Out of her. Out of her in the name of Jesus Christ. Your butt on the floor in the name of Jesus Christ. Out. Out in the name of Jesus Christ. Out in the name of Jesus Christ. Your butt on the floor. Your butt on the floor in the name of Jesus Christ. Out of her in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Out in the name of Jesus. Out. 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 Out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Out of her. Out in the name of Jesus Christ. Your butt on the floor. Your back on the floor in the name of Jesus Christ. Your back on the floor. Your back on the floor in the name of Jesus Christ. Out. Out. Out of her in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Out. In Jesus' name. Your back on the floor. Out. 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 Out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Sister, you have been set free by the medium of the morning water. Rise up. Jesus Christ has set you free. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> the following day, she had an encounter with Prophet T.B. Joshua. Let's see what happened. As Prophet T.B. Joshua lays his hand on her in the name of Jesus Christ, she is clearly under the influence of the Holy Spirit, who is perfecting her deliverance. Watch as the chain Satan has used to connect her to himself in the form of demonic beads around her waist is cut in the power of the Holy Spirit. She falls down immediately. To God be the glory, she has been taken from the kingdom of darkness to light. Satan has only come to steal, kill, and destroy. For Jesus Christ has come to restore the relationship and fellowship between God and man. Glory be to God. Jesus Christ. So right now, our sister is here in our midst. We want to invite her forward to share her testimony to the glory of God and also her confession, which we believe will educate all of us here. Let's put our hands together for Jesus as she's coming forward right now. A new creation in Christ Jesus. Sister, you're very welcome here today. Can you introduce yourself to us? Tell us your name and where you're from. Thank you, Jesus. Emmanuel. God is with us. My name is. My name is. This is Cynthia Amarachi Ikumere. I based in Enugu, where I'm schooling. Okay, sister, we just want you to relax. Okay, just calm down. This is an opportunity for you to give a wonderful testimony that will educate people around the world and also introduce many people to our Lord Jesus Christ. So just relax. We want you to begin by explaining uh, how this evil spirit entered your life. Tell us right from the very beginning what happened. Okay. It all started when I was in my mother's womb. I was not meant to be a devil, a devilish person or an agent of darkness. But through the means of the devil, knowing the destiny of children, of, as in children, while they are in, the, in their mother's womb, they were able to locate me as a person that is destined to serve God all the rest of her life and do many wonders and rescue souls for the, for the service of God. So they tampered with my destiny right inside, inside my mother's womb. So that was why I, how I was initiated right inside my mother's womb before I was even born. I used to sell the, as in this earthly world. I was inside the womb as an agent of darkness. 
So it happened that while I was there as a baby, they, they, have, they, they brought two other babies, as in they created two other baby angel, agents to come and assist me, come out into this world as triplets. So as I was in my mother's womb, she didn't know that she was carrying triplets. And the scan of anything, I thought did not show that. All she was saying was me. And the doctor, the scan, everything was me, what she was saying. And the, and the, and the, uh, the prophecy that I was going to come out of this world and serve God, that her name would be Amarachi and she would be dedicated to the, in the altar of God. So that was when they now sent this three and two and two and agents of darkness to come and assist me come out into this world. So finally, when I was born, physically I was born alone, as in I came out alone like this, as a one baby. But my mother did not know, and the people around the doctors and nurses that assisted at the level did not know that they delivered three babies, as in three plates. Two were invisible, as my sisters that accompanied me into this world, on one on many occasions, in many reasons, because I was meant to be a great agent of darkness, because my destiny has been tampered with. So when I was born, they, they entered me at the age of eight months, and admitted the, the says called the sickness into me to be taken away the money and make my family dissolent. So that was why I was very sick, taking the money that was coming into the family as an agent baby, as an agent, as if the foolish baby that was not meant to bring progress or anything good to the family or anything good to the society she find herself into. Rather, all she was meant to do was to bring evil and to bring evil and to bring destruction and so many calamities in the world physically so as I'm growing I was growing I was growing to the age of eight, eight years when now they now told me that it was now time for me to start operating and okay, learning so, the sorry to cut you sister you said at uh, the age of eight that is when you really started your assignments now you said they told you who are the people that began to give you these instructions who are those people my three, my two sibling sisters, I call the three, as in my two twin sisters, that we, I told you that we came out as triplets, identical sisters, but two are physical, as in spiritual. They are there to give me guidance into the work I am about to venture into, which is the work of the evil forces. Okay, so only you were able to see these two sisters. No one else could see them. They can be physical, like they can be physical and want to miss around in crowd. And you know, because people will be saying that, but they don't know that this is not real human beings. But it's only me that knows when they are in oppression, they don't show themselves. They come as spiritual beings. But I'll be seeing them physically as I'm seeing every other person here now. They'll just be physical, I'll be uh, interacting with them, and they'll be telling me things I need to know in the, as in, uh, at my work in this world. Okay, so you said at the age of eight, these. Uh demonic twin sisters began to give you your first assignment just tell us what at was that at the age of eight years that was when i started my work as an agent of darkness a devilish person so that was when at the age of eight years immediately i now started my work i was saying as an agent of darkness by the means of initiating people as in other children that was my not as a primary school initiating children and causing from into asking, causing deaths by causing accidents on the road. Why you see a child crossing the road and she was hit by a car and she lost, it, she died? I will be the one to, as in, controlling that emo, that emotion of the accident, and that will take the, the, the life of the child away. And through the, uh, the, the the gifts they sent to me spiritually, my lockers and bags were equipped each every every day. I come to school with gifts like biscuits, sweets, candies, all those things that makes as in a trust children easily. And they salivate a lot. Also the salivating ones that see me with those gifts, they will come around me to collect them. So by giving them those gifts, once they eat 
something from my hand, they are my, my own. I will not come in the eve as in 12 p.m. I will not appear in that room wherever you are, that child is. Wherever you matter what you want, for you have accepted my gift, you are one of us in the kingdom. And you see us just swimming in the dream or doing one thing or the other. And you find yourself in a big hall where you see many people and there the, the initiation will begin. And then you'll find yourself being initiated into the kingdom of darkness. And we'll be giving you small assignments as agents of darkness until you now become fully equipped and now a full okay. agent. Okay, sister. So the things that you give to these children, they are not physical. They are not from this physical world. They will appear inside your bag or your locker. And once you give them to other children, they are now used to initiate those children into the kingdom of darkness. Yes, it, it, it will... And my locker will be empty when as in after sharing the day's gifts it will be very empty but when i come to school the next day it will be packed with gifts again and my bags will be packed with gifts and i will leave with them to school then on and on the on the school bus or anywhere i find myself with other children i will share my gifts Okay, what, what are, who are the type of children that you would target? Is it the ones that are especially intelligent or the ones that are, are very, very active? Who are the people that you target? Well, I, I, can, I, I can explain that we have different gadgets in my body to determine which destiny you have and which destiny you don't have. We target children that has more inter as more intellectual as ability, as intelligent children. We now take away their, their destiny and you see your child as brilliant as she is. And what is happening to my child? She used to be brilliant. Now she's going back to world and school. She's no more as, as performing very well. You don't know that her future has been tampered with because of the little gift, just one sweet or one biscuit that she collected from my hand. That was how we initiate people into the, the kingdom and take their destiny. Okay, now we understand this was at the age of eight when you were in primary school. This was your first initial assignment. Tell us, as you begin to grow older, how did this assignment now become even more mature and, and more serious? By the time I was in, in secondary school, that was when I now matured very well. I that I could I did I wouldn't need the help of my sisters anymore because they are, they are teaching the tutoring uh, the tutoring moment is over. I'm now a a very powerful agent of darkness because of with their help. So when I was in secondary school, I was able to manipulate very well. Then my, as in my attract, attraction uh, attraction gadgets was there. Everything I needed was there for me to perform any kind of thing I want to perform, like attracting men, luring pastors, as in the so-called pastors that claim that they are powerful. We go after this with the people we target very well, and the so-called born again that claim to be born again. We not target them, and then we not bring them down by, by by sexual means or by standing on the road. And now you stop, you know, something like the many means we have, we can use and, and and get those people. Okay, you were mentioning some methods of attraction with which were already in your body, some powers you had to seduce. Tell us more about these powers. Where were they located in your body, and how would you use them to catch and seduce these men? Okay. One, uh, uh, the, the major, the major, the major gadget I have is this one in, in my, uh, this one attached on my teeth, which I have it right from anybody that knows me, right from childhood, will, will know that I, I always put this on. It has many colors, as in I can put, change it at any time I want. So if this is, it's physical, you think it, it will appear to attract you. You say, oh God, I like this, I want this on, can you just give it to me? I will say yes, I can give it to you. Then you don't know that through that means, I will already initiating you, by reading you, as in assessing the kind of person you are. And again, another gadget I have with doing is that bid. Whenever I'm on assignment, I'm passing you, you pass me, you're a great man of God, that bid on my waist will start hurting me. It will start being hot on my waist. And I will now know that that person that just passed me is a highly born again or a Christian or a, a, past, a powerful past man of God. That's how I detect. And all the instruments deposited so many places in my eyes, my forehead, as in uh, my breast, like everywhere, you my, my, you know, my private part, everywhere, it's just there. And so I can use them at any time I want. Okay, madam. So we want you to still give us more explanation concerning this. 
if you wanted to seduce someone, uh, you said there were powers which were placed inside your teeth, which were the jewelry was in your teeth, also in your eyes, different parts of your body. Now, what would happen to such a person if you seduce them? For example, if they're a married man or they're a businessman, what would begin to happen to them after you entrap them? First of all, I would know where you're going to. I would know. I would monitor you. If you, maybe by, for example, you want to take on a journey, and I know that you're traveling, maybe by road, I will now appear as a beautiful lady on the road, standing there. Once I notice that your, your car is coming, I will now appear as a lady, as a full woman, grown woman, beautiful. Then my beauty will shine very well. Then I will emit my breath out. And the minute I emit my breath out, it will not enter inside the car you are traveling with, or anywhere you are. I want to catch you. Then if you are resist, if you have the anointing in you, you can be able to resist me by passing without stopping for me. But if you don't have that anointing, and as I, I, I emit this bread and it enters inside the car, and you are gone because once it touches you, you start having the feelings, the urge to stop for this woman and have her, you know, and devour and just have it, you know, mesmerize and mesmerize me, mess yourself up with her sexually. So I will stop for me and I'll enter the car. Once I enter the car, you are our instruments. Okay, so if you sleep with such a person, what, what would begin to happen to them? How would their life now be destroyed? When I, I finish with you, your destiny is gone. Your spirit is locked up in the kingdom of darkness, where you cannot escape anymore. Unless the intervention of the Holy Spirit that we can rescue you from our hands our junk we call it uh, we call it our coffin where we normally keep our our the souls of our captives so they cannot be as in they cannot be rescued but only in by the like like the the, uh, the senior prophet tb joshua as he's speaking out for that man is a troublemaker okay before you get to that area sister we are still going to go to that area. You, you said that you specifically targeted so-called Christians or so-called pastors. Can you explain what do you mean by that? What, what do you mean by, by that when you say someone is a so-called Christian that you were able to target and seduce? The people that we call the so-called Christians are the people that claim to have the anointing in them why they are nowhere to be found in the presence of God at all. They are with us and they are claiming to be there. That is when you provoke our, our, our instincts by claiming what you are not. And then you live in sin and then you mount to the podium every day and then you try to speak out the word to, for, what, for what are you trying to speak out? Why you belong to us? You're trying out as you do commit sin, you allow it, but then you out. I will never fail because that has in me the highest level in the kingdom of darkness. I'm called the she devil because I was married to the Lucifer himself. So it gave me the powers, as in the great powers, to to be as in to, to do the final battle. Because when they send them out there, they mess up and they finally capture their souls. We will not try our possible best to rescue that so that they won't confess as I am doing now. So that is my major work in the kingdom of darkness. Okay, okay, sister. Now you said that you also specifically targeted so-called pastors, uh, people who claim to be men of God but are not actually. How would you go about uh, seducing or attacking such a pastor? Would you actually go to the church? Just give us an idea of how you would go about that. When we noticed that, when we, we, we got the record of you, that you are now a so and we, this person has, has a loophole here, he's, he's ang he normally gets angry, and he, or maybe he goes after women, and we now say, okay, then they will not bring the reports. Our report agents will not bring the reports to us, with the, the senior agents, and now I'll be sent out to the church. Then I will not target the time the man of God is on the pulpit, and that is a Exactly when I will now come. I don't come early to church. I come late. So that when I am coming, you will lose focus. And then you'll be attracted to that person coming. Then you will lose at your attention. Then we are, then other agents, other demons that are with me will not strike you down. And then you will not capture your soul. You will not know what you're doing again. You will lose your anointing. And definitely, if you're a stubborn one, we will kill you and take you, your soul to the kingdom of darkness. But if you're not a stubborn one, we just take your soul and leave you 
this as it leave you a, a messed up person and that you start seeing yourself messed up as in you are nowhere to be found again in the faith. Okay. So you, you mentioned that you could actually appear on the roadside taking a, a different form. Like, for example, you take the form of a very, very beautiful lady. Does that mean that those satanic powers gave you the ability to transform into different types of beings or forms to as achieve your assignments? Can you just explain more yeah, about that? Yeah, that is the first thing they taught me. The transformation means oh, the transformation gadgets were put inside me. Where I have to, I will speak out some incantation and I will disappear into that particular animal that I want to appear with. Then I will not change immediately. I, 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 I will be spelling out that word. I'll be spelling it. Immediately I spell out that word as a spell. I will be changed. I will change automatically out of my physical world and turn into that particular animal. Especially, I love turn it into a cat because a, the cat is a sneaky animal that comes in quietly and slowly and now divorce you like just i like so that i come like a cat i can turn like a bat i can turn like a, a butterfly i can turn like a bird anything i want to have the power in me inside me it's inside me it is emitted from the graveyard so i have it inside me already so i can turn into anything are you talking about physically turning into such animals Yes, physically. I will turn into the animal. You will not see the animal. If I want you to see me, you will not see me. Like in the case of one pastor, I, I, I attacked. I now, the, as we saw that, I thought I, as I was monitoring him from the time he was praying. So immediately he, he was praying. I was monitoring him so that I would know the time I would go and strike him. So after, the, after he had finished, I, I noticed that he has dropped his Bible on the table and now bowed down his, his, his face. I thought I was, deceived, I was deceived. I never knew that he was meditating. He was spiritually alert. I was now thinking that maybe he's sleeping or something. So I now went immediately, I changed into my physical form and I went into that uh, part, that the room I it appeared and appeared into his room. Immediately I appeared in the, in the, in the room, immediately he was alerted and he came, he came back to uh, his store and now looked around and I saw me as a cat. I, I sneaked under his bed, he chased me and took his broom and was hitting everywhere I was running to. I was like trying to escape. He was mentioning the name, that name. We always call it that name but now I'm a believer and I can now boldly call the name of Jesus Christ. But before I can't be able to but before I can't be able to mention that name, Jesus Christ, we always call it that man, that name. So he would be calling that name, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. So the place was so hot for me and I now wanted to disappear. That was when he now caught me with the broom on my hips and I now broke my, and gave me a wound and broke my joints. So I now disappear immediately with the help of my sisters that came in. I grabbed my hands and I disappeared. So when immediately I disappeared, I found myself in in my room, very tired and I turned into a human being. I noticed the wound was there, so I, I, I immediately report back to my kingdom and told them that this pastor is very powerful, I can't handle him. Then that, that look at the wound has inflicted on me. They now say that it's a wound from a man of God, that it cannot be healed, that I should manage it. So it was, I was now, it was now there. So you mean to say, sister, that when you were hit by the broom as a cat and you now transform back into a human, the same area where you were hit as a cat now affected you physically. There was a wound at that spot. Yes, of course. Even up till now, the place is still paining me as in up till the time I came here. But I noticed that after my deliverance, the place was relieving me because as in, I used to, if my lips were limp, if I'm walking, you notice that I'm limping because I've gone to her, I, I, I complained to my, my, my mom then that I was sick, you know. Out of her desperation, she took me to the hospital and the doctors were like, it's an osteoporosis, I want to, I want to x-ray. They now say that it's osteoporosis. I say, I sickness called osteoporosis. They never knew that, that there was something as in very sure that is against it that I was actually hit by a pastor. So then now, as, as I told me to start managing the sickness, I, as the, it, I, it was it was not that I was, they can't do anything about it. So God now left it there to be a thorn in my flesh, and it was now causing me pains every time. Okay. So you mentioned that all of these activities graduated when you were in secondary school. You began moving out to destroy men, especially so-called pastors, so-called Christians. What now happened when you moved up into university level? Can you explain more about that? Wow. Yeah, I 
found it very very odd because as, as a secondary school girl, I was even more powerful than I, I, I thought. And I was doing much, much evil, very, as in committing so many evil things. So when I now graduated, into, when I now got admission into the university, I was, I was seen as a very beautiful and very smart girl. So then I didn't know, I know there was something called cultism. I didn't know at all until, until one, they now appeared to me and came to me and now so told me that they wanted me for this, the comfortable members of the, of, the, of the school. And I was then asking myself, uh, what is happening in this? I was, every time I come to school, I will see one group of people approaching me, asking me to come and belong to their society. What is all this? Until I now went to ask questions from uh, where I, I, I used to get information. And that told me that, that there was something that is called confraternity. Something of that society I can enter in school. And my powers, I now was very happy. All in the order of capturing powers and, and getting more powers. I joined one confraternity. One powerful confraternity and vivo and deep as bloodthirsty confraternity in my school. As an as a, a, a graduate, as undergraduate, I, I entered the, the confraternity. So you now joined a cult in university. Can you explain to us what were the activities that you and your fellow cult members were involved in as you were being driven by these demonic powers? As a member of as a spiritual agent of darkness already, and now a, a confraternity member, just a cultism member, a society member, I now use to combine the two powers to now work for the confraternity. I was now seen as a queen. I passed through many times, so many, I passed through their, 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 their initiation smoothly. And now with my powers, I was, I was climbing the ladder, of, the ladder of powers in that confraternity, bringing men down as, in, as they have a, a counterpart also the other confraternities that do war with them we now i now use my power to bring our enemies out from their hiding places with my power of uh, the gadget i have inside me so i always i used to be summoned to go and bring out this enemy i will use my gadget and locate your house and then i will follow you up with other queens other beauty because we don't take girls that are not beautiful, they, are, they don't merit the, to be a queen. Once you are not beautiful, you are not our own. But once you are very beautiful, we target you and we must bring you into that, inside our body. Uh, that's confraternity. So, now, they, they use us to be able to capture these men that as in that our comfortable enemies. Okay, so now you're talking physically in the university, you were engaged in all of this cultism. Now we want to understand at this point, spiritually, you mentioned earlier that you became so strong that you even rose to the point whereby you were a, a wife to Lucifer. Can you just give us more understanding concerning that? What do you mean by that? Everything about me was connected to the sea, marine world. Nothing in, about me was not connected to the marine world. Even that confraternity is connected to the marine world. So as a, as I was born into this world, as a, this, we have we have name as in the the, the, the three sister, three evil three sisters. My name is Shako the Great, and my sisters is Shantama and Shako and and Sha, Shantama and Shama. So the, Shako the Great is the physical one. Why Shantama and Shakura was the ones that is not physical. So we now I, they, I, we use our power as a combined powers to now fight the physical battle. So you mentioned that you even rose spiritually to the level whereby you said you were Lucifer's wife. I mean, how did you attain such a level? And what, what do you mean by saying you became a wife to Lucifer? If, if you, in the kingdom of darkness, we have, so we have many departments and many grace promotions. So the height of the, the highest promotion is the twelfth level. But the three, that's three, three, six, six, nine, and nine, and then the twelfth level. So as I'm killing and killing and killing and killing and bringing more souls into the kingdom of darkness, I was making Lucifer very happy. And then she now chose me that if I should attend the post of this twelfth, and, and should kill one particular pastor then I will attend this post and that was when I went after that pastor that, that he was really really it 
took me time before I got this pastor because I really wanted to attend that post of 12th so, so I, could, I could be married to the Lucifer. So immediately I got the pastor by my monitoring I kept following me up every time as in, and, I saw, and I saw that he is used to anger. And I saw the spirit of anger inside him and now one day his wife provoked him to anger and he was very angry before he left for the church. So on the road I now cost his car, I don't cost the car to, 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 to collide with a, a coming truck and he had an accident and died on the spot. Immediately, I, immediately the pastor died on the spot and I, I went with happiness back to the Lucifer and reported that I've killed the pastor and they now promoted me to the 12th level. So my, my, I was now a great person not to be, and I wasn't able to be given minor, minor assignments. It's only difficult ones that our minor agents cannot handle that they sent me to go and handle it. Like I was here now. I, I was here as an agent. As in, then I came. I came as an agent on a on mission in this place to, to monitor this, this, this stubborn uh, troublemaker that used to torment our kingdom. Okay, so. okay. We are still coming to that area. Now, you... You, you keep mentioning that you would go and report to Lucifer, go and meet there. What do you mean? Are you talking about that you would physically travel to that place or is it spiritually go there? Or where is that place located? Is it here in this world or another world? Just explain to us. Yes, yes, it's in this world. Somewhere in this, I can't, uh, it's somewhere in this state, Nigeria. But it's place, a church. Is, the pastor has a church. The pastor has a church in this state of Nigeria. But as in one particular place, I know the church. I know where I can meet him. I know that he's going out that day. But the wife, due to the provocation of the wife, we entered through his wife and we were able to provoke him. Then I now, I now transformed into a human being. And now he was standing on the road. And then I caused the accident on the road. And he lost his life on that okay. So, sorry to cut you short, sister. We're not just referring to this particular pastor you attacked at this stage. You keep mentioning that you would go and meet Lucifer and go to another kingdom. Can you explain to us, are you talking of here on earth or you would actually travel to another kingdom to meet uh, Lucifer and to give reports of your assignments? Is it when you sleep and dream that you go there? Can you just explain to us what you mean by that? There is, there is a place called... called the 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 um, there's a place called the sick evil dead forest in one particular country but that is the main our capital our capital our major our major place we used to go then we will now enter into the tree each agent has a tree and my own is at the central middle of the tree my presence that used to travel with thunder and lightning and when i'm traveling with thunder and lightning my presence will be felt in the whole forest and all the other demons hiding as in living in the tree waiting for my arrival so that we can now enter the, the spirit this way under the marine world will now come out, come out from the trees and then i will now go and touch my own tree. Everybody will lay hands on our trees and now disappear and then we'll find ourselves under the water where we will now be given assignments and we'll do our daily, our daily work. Everybody will now disperse. Okay. Now, you mentioned that everything about you was connected to this demonic world. Could you just give us an example of some of the things apart from the small items like sweets and biscuits that you mentioned earlier as a child that you used to initiate were there some other items that you would bring from the spiritual world into the physical world in order to initiate people or destroy people uh, and how would you go about using such things to entice people we normally use things that people like a lot to initiate them because you cannot use what somebody does not like to get the person. Once you want to get something or trap or trap an animal, you use the, the, the things it likes or the or the or the meat, meat or anything that the, the animal likes. That's what you use to trap the person as a as a trap. So we normally use what people likes, like drinks. You know, smoke as in cigarettes. Once they, we produce all these things in our community, all the things you see in this world, as in we normally have our industry under the world, underneath, as in under, under, under world, 
industry where we produce every item. We will come out physically and we will notice that there is one particular product that people are buying. We will now use it, we will collect the sample here and go on the world and produce our own and then we will initiate it and then we will, our agents that are, that are, that are, their works are to supply those things to our, our market, the people in the market we will now be supplying it to them and people will be buying it and they will be getting initiated and then club things, people, people like to club, all these people that club a lot and we will normally transform ourselves in, into, our, into demonic form and some people, some dead spirits will, uh, uh, will transform themselves into physical being and that will not club because normally it's 12 o'clock that club starts and 12 o'clock is our, 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 our missing point. Missing 12, 12 midnight. 12 o'clock p.m. Yes, midnight. So those people that club a lot, are, in fact, their souls are almost ours because you don't know the person you dance with. Sometimes you end up dancing with the spirits, and you end up going into hotel with the spirits. And when you sleep with the spirit, there will be python that will, that will be in trans, transplanted inside you, and then you find yourself that your destiny has been shattered. You find yourself messing up, and that's your, that's, that's, in fact, everything about you is gone. If it's someone that want to kill is at that point pre, pre, that point that will kill that person in the hotel room you now find out that there's there is a death you see they'll say somebody somebody so 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 somebody was seen in the hotel like there's one pastor I lost to a hotel room and I killed him there and it was written on the paper that uh, this so 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 pastor was seen as in a was like the, 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 the newspaper was carrying the news around he didn't they, they didn't know that it was an agent or as a spiritual matter so immediately we will catch up with this person inside the hotel room we we'll either kill you there or we we'll, want once we we'll collect what we want to collect we we'll leave you there for yourself to suffer Okay, so I think we're listening to what our sister is saying. Even you mentioned things like cigarettes, alcohol, that once someone starts taking such things, automatically they become addicted to them and they are initiated into that kingdom of darkness. The same with visiting places like clubs, where we know the activities taking place are not of God. These are the places where demonic beings like you once were have access to, to destroy and manipulate. Now, sister, Apart from what was on your mouth, the jewelry, we saw that there was another item of jewelry that was actually on your body uh, that we saw during the deliverance. Could you just explain to us that jewelry around your waist, how you received that and what that jewelry was actually meant for and how you used it? That is the bait. The, that's, that is the bait I wear around my waist. Basically, it looks like a normal bait that people can wear and you know you buy it but spiritually this this beat is real python or cobra tied around my waist so if i want to face any a mission i want to be on a mission when i want to go on any mission i will tie this thing on my waist and i will go, go out then then this beat will transform to be a python and then I will resist anything evil on my way and then if you're a pastor or any as a powerful man of God that passes me that time this thing now I'm holding on my hand this bait will start hurting me like fire and on my waist and I will now know that the person that just passed me now is spiritually alert or spiritually powerful so that is the work of this bait it is a resistance gadgets that I used to resist the kingdom of as in, any powerful there's anything that is powerful like I'm going on a mission to attack any pastor this thing does not leave my waist but when I was coming here there was something unique that happened when I came to I came to this place this bit I okay, never forget sorry, sorry before going ahead sister you mentioned coming here, but we want to know how did you actually find out about Prophet T.B. Joshua and the ministry of the Synagogue Church of All Nations? How did you hear about this ministry? Because you, earlier on you were mentioning that uh, the person here is a troublemaker. We want you to give more light on that. Like I said before, that this, uh, the, this, uh, 
we use man coin, pastors, we don't call their names. These powerful pastors. You don't, when I came first, we don't mention their names. And I normally used to see, see the pictures, as in the, the video, as in the, 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 the telecast in my house then. But I thought I would turn it off immediately because I've not been someone that's attacking, but I know that he is assisting and he's causing trouble in the kingdom of darkness. And he's a troublemaker that whenever we, we've laid so many traps for him, even he's being monitored 24 hours to, to make sure that we can make him to come to, to, to sin or to, uh, to belong him to sin or to make, find any, for any little fault in him, but all to no avail because he is spiritual, always spiritually alert. We, we want you to give more light on this, sister. You mean to say in the kingdom of darkness, they were aware of the activities of this ministry and what Prophet T.B. Joshua has been doing? Like I say, yes, we have all the data of, of pastors we have pulled down. We have pulled down in the past. Even the ones that are using our power, that used to come to us and collect powers. Those ones, you are not minding them. But the real troublemakers are the types of the, as in the senior prophet T.B. Joshua. They are the real troublemakers that are troubling our kingdom as in then. So we are, those ones are the ones that we normally monitor 247 to see whether we can see anything that we we'll use and bring them down. Once we see any fault, no matter how little that fault is, because the devil is always accusing brethren in the presence of God. So any little sin we, have, we, we saw in you, you've been accused by Lucifer in, front of him, in the presence of that man. We normally call him that man. I don't have the power then to call call out this name but now I will bravely call out Jesus Christ now because then I used to call them that man in the sky so he uh, we, uh, normally like whenever 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 don't worry sister the spirit of God is in control our sister is explaining how uh, the ministry here at the Synagogue Church for Nations has caused a lot of havoc and destruction in the kingdom of darkness that so many people, agents who had come here had received their freedom, their deliverance and as a result of that uh, many agents of darkness tried on many occasions to bring down Prophet T.B. Joshua, monitoring all, all the time. Sister, can you just give us an example of how uh, agents of darkness were, were monitoring Prophet T.B. Joshua and, and tried to bring him down? We, 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 we monitor him, two for seven, by, for example, I don't know this, I've not been to this place before, but I managed to know that there was a collapse building, a collapse building sometime last year, and that was the work of the agent of darkness, but physically, Everybody was seeing it as, as if it was his fault. It as if it was his fault. It wasn't his fault. It was an attempt to make him ask God why. Then if he asked God why or get angry or get agitated, we will now manipulate him. So we, we now We, we, when we heard that, well, as we monitored him, as I was saying, we are monitoring him. So when we cannot penetrate, as a troublemaker he was, well, more as in which we came to this place, as in our, we sent our agents through the collapsed building. So I wanted to emphasize on the people because I don't know anything about him before. I've never met him before. I've never been to this place before. But. Spiritually, I know that I will, I, I will hear about it, and that is our handwork. The collapse building was the handwork of the agents of darkness, just to make him, to pull him down. And right, even the more they are dragging him to court, is also our making, just to make him ask God why. Then when he asks his God why, then we will be able to be putting more temptation on his way. Then, as we are doing this, we notice something about this man and that's why he said that he's a very much trouble to the kingdom of darkness he's a troublemaker if we the more we try to make him sane that that is the time he he, he finds he find himself being stronger and stronger and
and stronger in faith. to go on this mission because as each pastor that I attacked I couldn't go on that mission without being permitted to go there so I was hearing this T.P. Joshua T.P. Joshua that name was scratching my, my ears but I've nev they've never summoned me and I was asking myself why why can't they give me this man let me torture him like I used to torture others but the fact that they have not called me up is the, the fact that they have not seen any sin in him because when they saw sin in any pastor that was when they would summon me to come and attack him but now they have not called me up I will not go on the mission because no sin was yet found in him and we cannot operate smoothly without seeing any, 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 any accusing finger we will lay on him before God so hey, we are now trying our best by all means to get this man down and he, the more we do it the more he goes about smiling, doing his humanitarian work, and in the kingdom of darkness, all these things pain us a lot. Because this humanitarian work he used to do, he's a very kind man, and we hate people that are kind. And God also favors people that are always kind, and and also you know that like, God favors them a lot and protect them. And there is always this fire around this man, and this arena, this synagogue. There is a fire around this place. And there is a fire around this place. That was the day I came. I wasn't allowed. That I, 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 I managed. I, some these things keep my memory to come with my beat that Sunday. Immediately I found myself in the church. I wasn't even allowed. I wasn't even thinking of operating. Okay. Because my sorry, sorry to cut you at this point, sister. You. you you said finally you came to the church last week. What actually brought you to come to the church last week? Like I said, I thought I was being smart or I was having fun or serving the devil. I never knew I was destroying myself. And I'm now the deliverance period is around the corner. So I never, dis and God gave me that second chance to survive this heat from that pastor. But as my joints being broken, it was the second chance God gave me. But I never used it as a lesson. I still came here by to, to, to venture and capture this man out of his stubbornness because now the devil has not come, asked me to go and I wanted to do it by myself to prove to him that I am really capable of submitting, making this man to submit to our powers. But when I came here I forgot my bed, my, my resistant bed and immediately I was out there carrying out my oppression as in my little little oppression monitoring everywhere, trying to monitor everywhere. That was when that light bright lights came upon me like on our on our ways and immediately I opened my eyes I couldn't see anything I what I was hearing in my ear was run 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 I wanted to run away but they held me I was shouting I was seeing fire emitting from this place fire was everywhere I said no no I was shouting no they still they held on to me and they were dragging me to this place I was shouting I was being aggressive because I never wanted to step on this arena because the light and darkness has nothing in common because I was the darkness and I saw light here so I have not seen in common with them so that was what I was going backward and they were dragging me and then I wanted to also put and make them go get angry with me and let me go because I wanted to get to this fight because immediately I wanted to use that thing. yes the, 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 the minister was busy ministering that uh, morning anointing water on me. The thing was shaking me. They were shaking my body. Everyone was on fire. I was feeling uncomfortable. I was so aggressive until I felt this bead on my waist. My sisters appeared in my hotel room and brought this bead and transferred it on my waist. And I was able to now open my eyes and was now speaking out to that minister. But I, on, his fa on her face, I was seeing fire on her face. But I was yet talking to them. I have, I believe, I have this uh, my resistant bead now. I cannot talk to them. But finally, 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 I succumbed to the Holy Spirit and I fell down. Uh, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
So we watched it all on the clip, what happened when the morning water was ministered to our sister. So you mean to say, sister, you didn't come to the church with these beads. You didn't come, it was in the midst of your deliverance that they appeared on you as a result of the fire of the Holy Spirit that was burning you. I didn't really call, I, was like saying, I never for once as an agent of darkness forget to go with my beads. It is a, a very powerful gadget I use, a resistance gadget. I don't leave it in any mission I go. But I, I, I was asking myself what happened when I came into this church on Sunday. I now forgot my, what something I have not done before. I forgot my bead on my waist in my hotel room. I was now I couldn't escape. I couldn't resist the power until they now left me, and I went. I went. I went outside. I wanted to cause confusion again to go to go back to my hotel room. Immediately, my sister, with the help of my sisters, they were now they now transmitted this thing spiritually, and I, I felt it on my wrist, on my waist. And as the fire, the anointing oil, morning oil, anointing oil was being splashed on me. Morning water was splashed on me. I, I felt so hot, and the beat was hurting me so much. I was screaming. I was screaming. Finally, my sisters. I was holding out my hands to grab their hands so that we can. I can disappear. They were nowhere to be found. And now, as and I was left alone, so then I was not saying that there was no need for you. There was no need for you. There was no need for you. You have to surrender. You have to surrender. That was all I was hearing. Finally, I now surrendered. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Now, after the deliverance you received on Sunday, we saw the following day you had an encounter with Prophet T.B. Joshua himself to the point where these beads were actually cut away. Can you just describe what happened? After the deliverance here, with the, I encountered here with the minister. I now noticed, I now went back to my hotel room. I didn't encounter the man of God. Then, on Monday, they warned me not to try to make a kingdom mistake again. So I came here on Monday prepared with my bead on my waist. So as I, when I was here, be just waiting for counseling to be going out, I was angry with myself. I said, how I wish I would see this man. And when I would see and I, 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 face to face, then immediately he came out. People were shouting. And I said, yeah, this is the opportunity I have. Immediately I went, I wanted to go close to him. I was drawing back. I wanted to go close to him. I was drawing back because the fight was around him was too much. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go, go get close to him. He noticed and came, in, uh, came towards me and hit me on my back. Something like a force carried me up and now dashed me against the wall. I, I, he was, I, I fell down and he just left me there. And now Ash cautioned me to, go, to take away those beads I have on my waist, which nobody knew it was there. I now raised up my clothes for them to discover that I had a bead on my waist because so the man of God saw it and now said to them, call that thing, they should get rid of that bead on her waist. So they now raised my clothes. I was now resisting their hands, not to pull as in, not to cut the bead, but finally, finally, they I succumbed to the power of the Holy Spirit and then they were able to cut this bead. Immediately they cut this bead. That, that moment they cut this bead, my power of, of resistance was gone. I felt my legs being knocked down all my body as my muscles had left me and now fell on the ground wow one more time let's put our hands together for jesus christ now sister by the grace of god it has been one week since your deliverance here in the synagogue church for nations can you testify to the world what are the changes in your life and what are the experiences you've had to confirm that truly you are disconnected and delivered from the powers of darkness after my encounter with the man of God, J.B. Joshua, it was very amazing because I lost all my powers, which I've never done before. I lost all my powers because those people that I was for working for were now against me because they were now coming to attack me, to kill me, and to take me away by all means. Not to even mess it for me this time, but to kill me. But I noticed that while I was going home that month, that month, Monday, Monday evening, with the, after the encounter with the man of God, I entered my, I fell three good times on the road, and I got up. I, 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 I took my, my, my. Beat my my face bracelet. I 
I took my, I, I wore my, I removed all the ordinary uh, powerful bracelet I, uh, 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 chain I was having, and then I wore this, I replaced it with the bracelet, fake bracelet, and I immediately I noticed that I, w I collected that something they, were, they normally used to shout, Emmanuel. Immediately that those powers came to me, I said, Emmanuel, and immediately I saw it was, uh, as in the attack, everyone that was spinning then, my room, the whole room I was, was spinning around. I was spinning, I was shouting. In that, I was shouting, and I, as I was shouting, I saw a light that shone on my face. I looked up to that light, I couldn't see anything. Immediately, out of that light, the man of God now stepped out, his face shining. He now, the man of God, as in TB, as the man of God, senior prophet TB Joshua, appeared from that light and raised and beckoned to me and brought out his hand and gave to me. Immediately I now raised my hand and I touched his hands. Immediately I touched his hands. I now recovered myself back. Immediately I came to my normal self again. Those people that those power that were pinning me down, many people that be spinning around now left immediately because the powerful as so, something powerful more than them has come. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. This is a confirmation of our sister's deliverance. The day after her deliverance, she received an attack in her hotel room. But as she was being attacked by these spiritual forces, she had a trance, or in that uh, hotel room, she actually saw Prophet TB Joshua appear, stretch forth his hand as he grabbed his hand. At that moment, the forces of darkness that were attacking her left her. And that is a confirmation that is indeed she is set free and delivered from the powers of darkness. And you mean to say since then, sister, you've not seen the, the two twin sisters that always used to be around you or have those uh, encounters with demonic forces. Since then, you've been free. Yes. After that Monday till now, I've not had any connection with my twin sisters or any type of connection with the kingdom of darkness. I've not had any connection as I used to have before. I used to communicate with them. No form of communication since I encountered the, 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 the uh, prophet C.B. Joshua. I never had any encounter with the underworld people again. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Now, sister, before you, you finally go ahead with your advice, we can see a couple of pictures on the board beside you. And we believe these can refer to your past life when you were under the demonic influence. Can you just describe to us what we're seeing in these pictures, just to educate people? This was my university, when I was in my university as a cultist. This, this, this one is the sign we used to give. As in whenever we are, we, I see, we see our member, I will give, we will put our hands and perform the sign. Then the person, if you are, if you are one of us, you also do the same sign. And then I will know that really you are our member. But if I do this sign and you didn't, rescue, you, you didn't do it back, you didn't throw it back at me, I will know that you are not a member. It is a welcome as in a greeting sign of our confraternity. Then the, the next, we can see how we was wearing red. In the confraternity is red and black with flash there. And all the colors of my body is red and black. I don't wear any other thing except that color. Then this one here, this, the black one, this is the sign. Our the skull and the bone, the two bone cross, is the major symbol that we normally use. The crossing hand, we we'll do our hands like this to show the skull and the bone. Then this is the, the, the sign uh, with the symbol on my neck. Any member that sees this thing on my neck will know that I am a member of that confraternity. But any other confraternity members will not know that I am a member because they don't know the sign. Because this is our major sign. It's called and the bone. Then the other one here is when I'm on a, I want to go on assignment. As you can see, this one, my face is, I'm wearing on a mask. With, with my eyes, this eyes here, this thing I'm seeing through this place is a net. So I see through it so that you cannot recognize me. So I am a, 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 a dangerous, as in a dangerous, comfortable member on assignment here. We want to go on a killing. So that was why I wore this uh, mask 
face. So that's when I cover my, I sip it up. I now was ready for encounter, and I was tying on my my, my bag containing the arm arm bag I used to carry for my comfortable members. This uh, this bag now it, I didn't show very well, but it was a bag that I carried with so many charms and so many arms filled up in that bag, ready for outing. Then this is when I, 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 I finished on assignment and it was so successful. I came back, I was so happy with myself. As you can see, I was relaxing on the sofa. I was very happy with myself and I now zipped down my, the, the, the mask to refill my face. Now I am in the room. So without this, uh, when I am on assignment, I normally put on this my clothes that is like Spider-Man. Wow, well, we thank God that our sister's past life is over and what she's saying now is a testimony to the glory of God and also a confession for all of us here today and viewers around the world to learn many important lessons. Now sister, with what you have passed through in life, you've seen enough darkness and you've now come into the lights. What is your advice to our viewers around the world, especially for Christians or people who are attending church? And you mentioned earlier how you would always attack people that claim to be Christians, whereas they are not. With all of this, what do you really want to advise our viewers around the world right now? I have many advice to give to people all over the globe and all over the world. First, my first advice goes out to people that claim to be children of God and men of God. That we call them so-called men of God, but they are not man, 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 really repentant. They do. Uh, they go ahead to commit sin, having sexual lusts uh, over women, drinking, smoking. Why uh, they are behind uh, behind the, uh, behind the back? They are doing another thing. So when you really, as in, uh, my advice to them is to be careful because in the kingdom of darkness, you are no to be found in an anointing in the in the scale of our anointing to how we scale people you are nowhere so and I'm advising people to to always as in behave as they are claiming to be as in if you are a born again you should behave as a true born again you should resist all these things that I mentioned especially lost against women women is we use them a lot against men to bring them into the world and also my, my advice goes to parents to advise their children against collecting gifts from anybody in the school uh, because I noticed that when I was in primary school I don't get children that their parents are, are, are spiritually alert that, because when I give out my gifts to them they reject them and then I cannot penetrate I, I cannot initiate those children so always advise your children not to collect gifts and when you are going into university we youths we should be careful because there is something that is, is really is, is existent this thing called cultism it is a very 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 fatal fatal place to be so I was thinking I was as being being so great and I never knew I was destroying myself because this is not how I used to look before but I was so beautiful I used my beauty to commit so many sins so when you find yourself in the campus you are just very aware that there is something like autism and when they approach you just put yourself in the point again in, uh, because they are born again that are in the school. We don't go close to those people. So when you, when you find yourself in the campus, just enter any Christian society, not cultism, because it doesn't have any, give any gain. There's no gain in it. Okay, thank you very much, sister. And finally, there are many people who are watching you right now around the world who may still be under the influence of, of demonic spirits or even uh, being initiated into the kingdom of darkness that you're talking about, and they're watching you right now. What do you want to advise such people who are still engaged in such practices? Is if you are still working with the devil, if you're a cultist or you're a society member, or any form of society because there are very many in the kingdom of darkness we call them clans and kingdoms so if you're in any kingdom you're having no gain because i thought i was having fun i thought i was serving the people um, I, I was with the right people i never knew i was deceiving myself i was ruining my future and my future is going down down and down every day finally i realized that they were meant to kill me and not to save my soul but to kill me and cage me for eternity and now that is the end time 
we are fighting against flesh and blood. Not against, as, as in, the, the, our battle is not against flesh, but against spiritual warfare. There's a spiritual warfare really going on in this world. Because if I was not there, I wouldn't believe it. But I was a member, and I was a, 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 a very fervent, as in, submissive member that carried out her, her assignments fervently. So you should be very careful when you say you are a child of God. Because if you are not a child of God, you claim to be a child of God, you are in trouble. So that is what I want to say. That is this end time, please give your life to Christ. Time is too short. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So to, to cap it all, sister, do you mean to say that everything Satan used you to do in the past to kill, steal, and destroy, do you mean that you are now regretting it now that you have seen the lights? Yes, I'm regretting my past now because it, I did not gain anything. There's nothing in it. Rather, it was destroying me. Because if these people really love me as they claim to be, they will not put the sickness in me. And if they, they, they will use me the way to kill many people, and to shed many as in blood, and to destroy my marriage. So it's, I don't know really, I was like, oh, what is wrong with me now? But I regret those things. And I'm begging God to also please forgive me for, for taking so, 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 so self in life. And to fill me now with the Holy Spirit. Please, I also say also that the man of God, Senior Pastor, uh, Prophet C.B. Joshua, please help me spiritually, please, to be alert so that those people will not come back to take my soul again. For so many... Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. I think we've heard it all from our sister. Once again, every question we've asked and the confession we've heard today is for us to learn some important lessons and remember as Christians, our sister has already said it, our warfare is not against flesh and blood but it is indeed against spiritual entities that are causing crisis in our workplace, in our marriage, in our families, in every department of our lives. We believe this testimony has encouraged you to be closer to our Lord Jesus Christ, to be conscious of his presence in your daily life. And we know that our sister's testimony will really inspire and encourage millions of people around the world. Sister, we thank God for your deliverance. We pray that God will give you the grace to maintain this deliverance by making the word of God the standard for your life. And indeed, as you have said, the ministry of the Synagogue Church of All Nations is ready to assist you spiritually to ensure that you really maintain this deliverance to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Emmanuel. Nous venons entendre la confession de cette jeune femme qui a reçu sa délivrance dimanche dernier. Et on se donnait un petit résumé de ce qu'elle vient de confesser. Elle a dit qu'elle est née justement du royaume des ténèbres. La jambe de Satan est entrée en elle lorsqu'elle était bébé dans le ventre de sa mère. Mais c'est la seule qui, était, euh, qui est née physiquement alors qu'elle sont normalement des triplés. Les deux autres sont nés spirituellement. Et ces deux autres personnes qui étaient semblables à elle, ce sont, étaient ses guides, son guide durant justement son enfance jusqu'à ce qu'elle ait l'âge de 8 ans. Il lui dit qu'il faut qu'on commence justement à faire la mission que Satan lui avait donné. C'est comme cela qu'elle a commencé à détruire, qu'elle a commencé à voler, dérober, séduire les hommes et détruire les hommes. Elle a dit que durant toute sa vie, elle a détruit beaucoup d'hommes de Dieu qui prétendaient être des hommes de Dieu, mais lorsqu'ils ont des portes ouvertes, c'est là que Satan entre. Elle a dit qu'ils ont détruit beaucoup d'hommes de Dieu, beaucoup d'hommes. C'était sa mission de détruire, de tuer des gens. Elle a raconté aussi une histoire où elle s'est transformée en chat, qu'elle avait la, la possibilité de se transformer en n'importe quel animal qu'elle désirait. Elle a dit qu'elle elle est entrée dans la maison d'un pasteur, pensant que le pasteur dormait. Lorsqu'il a senti sa présence dans la maison alors qu'elle était transformé en chat, le pasteur a commencé à la chasser et en prononçant le nom de Jésus. C'est comme cela qu'elle a eu une blessure au niveau de la hanche et de la jambe. Elle a dit qu'elle a été quand même préservée, qu'elle était toujours encore en vie après cette attaque. Elle a dit qu'elle a continué à dire que même le bâtiment qui s'est écroulé ici à la synagogue église de toute nation, que ce sont les agents de Satan qui ont, voulu, qui ont écroulé ce bâtiment afin de faire l'homme de Dieu pour faire le choix, questionner Dieu et aussi abonner la main de Dieu. Mais cela n'a pas fonctionné malheureusement. Mais pour la gloire de Dieu aujourd'hui, elle a donné tout ce témoignage pour la gloire de Dieu, disant que maintenant elle est complètement délivrée, elle n'a plus aucun lien avec le royaume de Satan, elle est complètement libre. Elle a montré aussi sur ses photos les signes qu'ils utilisent pour se reconnaître de, de différentes fraternités, comme le voyons maintenant à l'écran. Et aussi euh, le costume qu'elle avait eu de, de, de mettre sur elle pour pouvoir aller en mission, pour pouvoir tuer, créer des accidents. Elle a donné aussi de beaucoup... Elle a dit que lorsqu'elle était enfant, justement, à l'école, euh, elle initiait beaucoup d'enfants avec les sucreries, des biscuits. Donc elle conseille maintenant aux parents de, 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 de dire à leurs enfants de ne rien récolter de quiconque à l'école, que ce soit des sucreries, que ce soit des gâteaux, de ne rien récolter. C'est comme ça qu'ils ici beaucoup de personnes. Elle se repentit aujourd'hui, elle a dit qu'elle regrette son passé en toute la gloire à Dieu pour sa délivrance. Est-ce que tu as... 
Escuchamos un maravilloso testimonio de esta mujer que nos cuenta que fue iniciada desde el útero de su madre y desde entonces nacieron dos bebés, dos bebés junto con ella, pero dos de ellos eran invisibles y solo ella era físicamente. Como agente del demonio su función era destruir y oprimir. Desde los ocho años empezó activamente como agente del demonio y recibía instrucciones por parte de sus hermanas, causando accidentes y enfermedad, muerte a los niños en su colegio, introduciéndolos al reino de las tinieblas. Ella nos cuenta que desde entonces, cuando empezó a actuar activamente como agente del enemigo, un poco mayor, estando en secundaria, usaba sus poderes para manipular a los hombres y a las personas a su alrededor. Ella tenía sus poderes en sus dientes y también en sus ojos. Ella nos cuenta que su blanco era un grupo llamado los supuestos cristianos ella los monitoreaba y junto a sus colegas del reino de los tinieblos los, los destruía y los hacía estar distraídos para poderlos hacer que su para poder hacer que su destino fracasara ella nos cuenta que estaba casada con lucifer y usaba su, sus poderes para transformarse en diferentes animales físicamente ella continuó trabajando en la vida de las personas e incluso quiso visitar a las sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones para ver si podía eh, destruir al ministerio del profeta Tibi Joshua no fue posible porque en realidad ella nos cuenta que era un, es un hombre guiado por el Espíritu Santo e incluso confesó que el colapso que hubo en la sinagoga fue realizado por los agentes de Satanás para hacerlo cuestionar y culpar a Dios es decir, ¿por qué pasó esto? así que ella nos cuenta que después de que recibió, de, después de que mini, fue ministrada con el agua de la mañana, todo su cuerpo empezó a sentir fuego, ella empezó a ver fuego en su rostro, en su cuerpo, en sus manos y ella no se explicaba, ella simplemente quería salir corriendo pero después de la liberación ella dice que sintió un cambio en su vida y que sintió que el Espíritu Santo tocó a su vida, al día siguiente el profeta Tibi Joshua oró por ella y ella había olvidado un brazalete que usaba en su vientre para poder destruir a las personas así que ella el día, ese día vino con ese, esa pulsera en su vientre con la intención de destruir al profeta Tibi Joshua, sin embargo, eh, ella dice que perdió todos sus poderes con el toque por parte del hombre de Dios. Ahora está aquí con su testimonio, diciendo que está libre de ese reino de las tinieblas en el que antes estaba y aconseja a todas las personas que busquen a Dios, que busquen la salvación de su alma, que es lo más importante, que su futuro en realidad importa y que aquí en la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones pueden encontrar la solución. Continuamos. Church of All Nations. Log on to our website www.scoan.org. Go to the Visit Us page. And for those from within Nigeria, you can call the three visit lines that appear on the website. For those from outside Nigeria, there are some frequently asked questions that will assist you in your visit procedure. Remember, it is essential that anyone from outside Nigeria should fill in the questionnaire. Please remember to answer every question that is asked, and after you have filled in the questionnaire, remember to click send. Please note, you must wait to receive an invitation or confirmation of your visit from us before making any traveling arrangements or flight bookings. All communication with the Synagogue Church of All Nations should be through the following email address, info at scoan.org. We look forward to hearing from you. Emmanuel, God with us.